Well, greetings, everybody. Um, I'm Matt Thatcher. If I haven't seen you in a while, or if you're new to the district, or if you're a freshman, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm the principal here at Cascade High School. And obviously, school's gonna look a bit different this year, so we wanna take just a few minutes to talk about that and hopefully answer some of your questions. And the first thing I just wanna say is, um, we feel your pain in the sense that this is not gonna be like a regular year. We're gonna do our best to make distance learning as good as it possibly can be. Uh, we try to do everything with excellence and we'll do our best. We have great people, great teachers, and I know as we partner together, we'll make the best of it. But let's not kid ourselves. We all know this is not as good as you guys being here and we miss you already. I wish that the students were here and families were in here. The reason most of us even got into education was we could build, so we can build relationships with, with students and families and it's a lot easier to do that when they're in person. So uh, I just am regretful and hope and hope that we can get all of you back in here as soon as possible. But in the meantime, we still have to do, do great things. We still have to get an education. We still have to have school. Uh, we're gonna do everything we can at Cascade to make that a good experience. So we're gonna tell you a little bit about that. The first piece is this comprehensive distance learning, which let me explain, that's a technical term that the state came up with, but what it really means is we're gonna do a lot better job working with you and your families um, over this first part of the school year until we come back in person. As you know, we're limited, we can't come back yet, and as soon as we can, we'll have the doors open, we'll have you in here. But in the meantime, we wanna do a uh, more rigorous opportunity for you to be able to work with teachers. And the way that looks at the high school is gonna be really similar to what it would be in a normal trimester, although it'll be condensed. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. But really, we wanna have five periods where you take your classes, some of those core classes, uh, some of those electives that we have here and condense those to the morning. We felt like we want kids to be able to interact with teachers on a regular basis every day and have that back and forth discussions in kind of a live setting, at least online. But we didn't want you to have to sit in front of a computer all day from 8 to 310. So what we've done is we've shrunk the periods down to about 45 minutes. So for example, first period would start at 8 o'clock in the morning and would be 45 minutes, you would be interacting with your teacher, you'd be interacting with, interacting with peers, you'd have a chance to work on some things, then there'd be a 15 minute break. And so each of those classes will start on the hour, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, and you would go through your five classes. At the afternoon, again, so at least you wouldn't have to sit in front of the computer all day. Yes, that is a four hours or a little more than four hours of time online. Of course, teachers won't be lecturing the whole time, just like in a normal class, some of it would be delivery of, of content, and then the rest would be independent working or working with peers. In the afternoon, we wanna do a few other things. First, that's provide opportunity for some one-on-one, -on -one, um, provide opportunity for small groups, for discussions. Some classes lend themselves needing more time, maybe some labs in the future, and this isn't set yet, but we wanna possibly have small groups of kids in here on a limited basis let's say a CTE class, like a manufacturing or a drama class or a cooking class where kids can actually get in here and do stuff. Again, that won't be right away. We'll give you more information for that later, but that would be the afternoon would be independent work and small group work. Also, we wanna be available for you in terms of office hours. Uh, we wanna be able to offer you some counseling services. We wanna be able for you to, to, to come in or call and talk to the administrators. So morning, content delivery, lessons with teachers, uh, directly and in the afternoon some more independent time in a nutshell that's kind of what it looks like i'm sure you'll still have tons of questions and we'll be happy to answer some of those now but some of those as we go throughout the first couple of weeks great question so so in terms of registration that's the same you won't come in and register in person like you normally have especially if you're a returning student either you were in the junior high or you're already in the high school you just register online. As you have every other every year, log into that parent portal and make sure your student is registered. That's really the, the nuts and bolts of, has your address changed, is your, and, and just demographic information, signing some forms that we have to annually. You just log into the parent portal like you normally do to check grades and all those things you did last year. Log in and register. No matter what school looks like, whether we are online or whether you're doing comprehensive distance learning or fully online for the rest of the year. We're coming back midstream. Everybody needs to register. So please take care of that this week. We hope to get everybody registered so we can make sure you get the classes and the electives that you want. Counselors are working really hard right now to put your schedule together. So everybody needs to log in and register between now and the end of this week. That for sure needs to happen. Then there really are, are two choices for what the education looks like until at least until we come back. The first one is one I just mentioned, which is the comprehensive distance learning. We're going to assume that the vast majority of you want that. 
That's what I just described, where you log in daily, not all day, but at least 40, 45 minutes a day with your teachers, and that goes on from 8 to, to uh, 12.45. That's the comprehensive distance learning. You're working with Cascade teachers, Cascade curriculum. You get all the good stuff you normally got, AP classes, special ed classes, the CTE classes, the electives, band, choir, drama. If you want that, which, which again, we believe is the best option, that's the one you, you would kind of automatically pick. That's the default option. The good thing about that is, again, you, you, you're rolling in school like you normally would, except you're not here. And as soon as we can come back in, then you jump back into classes and you continue in the five period day like we normally do. That's, that's speaking with families across our district. That's the one that most people are going to choose. We do have another option that may be necessary for a very small group of people. And I want to tell you about that. But if you are going to pick this one I'm going to mention, which is strictly online, we should really talk. Talk with me, talk to one of the other administrators, talk to our counselors. That would be reserved for a few instances. For example, you uh, have some serious health concerns and you knew you wanted to be out of school and not on this campus for the entire year, then you would choose the fully online version, which in the high school's case is APEX. It's an online curriculum. The upside to that is obviously if you can't, we're never planning on coming back here or you're out of the area or something like that, then it's really independent. The downside to that is it's really independent. You're kind of working on your own on an online curriculum. You're not tied into us really. You're not working with Cascade High School teachers for the most part and you're just kind of on your own. Now, it does serve a purpose. We've used APEX in the past for students that were behind in credit or students who couldn't be on this campus or students who had an illness. So it does. It does serve a purpose, but uh, I want to honestly tell you, um, if that's the choice you're considering, that should be for a very small group of kids and it should be in, in, under kind of some unusual circumstances. So if you're going to choose strictly online and not have any connection to Cascade, uh, let's talk. Uh, we do have that option. We'll, we'll enroll you in that, but I think it, um, it's probably not the best choice for most kids. As most of you know, I have, I have a son in, in Cascade High School as a junior, and I would, I would for sure sign them up for the comprehensive distance learning where they can have the best of both worlds. Still be able to, to uh, work independently at home, but also have a daily interaction with our trained and teachers who are super excited to get back in front of kids. The expectations for students at the high school really are kind of what I just went over in terms of, uh, of the time frame. Yes, they need to be planning to be in front of uh, a screen, a computer, a laptop, a, a Chromebook. So that's at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we, I think we all function better with a little bit of structure. And so whether that's you're by yourself at home with, with your student or you're working with other students in a small pod of kids, the idea would be you would be uh, interacting with teachers and peers for that first half of the day. So 45 minutes for first period and then a 15 minute break between each class. And again, it's not that you would always be in front of the computer or online with the teacher for, for the full 45 minutes, but during the delivery, class, answering questions, teacher teaching, some videos, live stuff, all that stuff will happen in the morning. And then, then of course, there is this independent learning that normally takes place. Normally you would be here the full day, but your independent part would take place from after lunch. So let's say we get done with school at 12.45, take a lunch break. So 1.30ish, somewhere in there to 3.10 is when you would, uh, as a student and as a family, be able to do it independently. Um, and the reason I would say if you're still doing your kind of independent or homework should be between uh, 1.30 and, and 3.30 is because if you need help, the teachers are still available. That's when you could uh, reach out for one-on-one, -on -one, either phone calls or Zoom meetings or, or um, emails. Uh, that's when you can get the extra help. And so the every day in front of teachers in the morning and then independent work in the afternoon and evening. So just like uh, the, there's a lot of differences between um, the spring and now in terms of attendance and grades, so let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, we're much better prepared, much better planned, have uh, online curriculum set up and ready to go. So with that comes this expectation that kids will be doing it every day like they did before. So there is attendance. The expectation is, is during that 45 minutes, you would be there online with the teacher, attendance would be taken. And um, that, that's kind of how it would be every day. Uh, now, of course, things come up, right? If for whatever reason, whether it's an illness, or let's say there was a, some, a technology glitch, or you're out of town for a day, these sessions will be recorded. And the idea would be um, 
the general expectation is that you're going to be in front of your teacher every day in that morning sessions for 45 minutes for each class. But if that's not the case, it's just like before. Let's communicate. We know things come up. We know that this, we're, we're not in a perfect world right now. There's lots of things that could get in the way of, of a specific day. The idea would be you would communicate with the teacher or communicate with us if there's a problem. We would do whatever we can to support you. If it's a technology issue, we have uh, hot spots and, and Chromebooks that we're gonna get out. We have people trained to, fit, to fix that. If it's, a, if it's an illness, if it's, a, if it's an out of town, if it's just a unique circumstance, just work with us. So yes, the expectation, you would definitely be online every day in the morning. If you can't, you could still get marked for uh, being present, but you de definitely need to communicate with us right away on a daily basis so we can make sure you still get the stuff you need to be successful. Yeah, so uh, at the high school, I mean, one of the great things about high school is you get a wide variety of classes. Of course, you have your math, science, English, etc., but you also have a lot of, of classes for uh, CTE and drama and choir and band and art. And so we're going to offer all those. Now, in the spring, that was very difficult because we basically uh, were kind of thrown into it. And if you really are a manufacturing class, it's going to be challenging. It'll still be more challenging. I would way rather have kids in here on the CNC or the welder every day but we are gonna offer all those classes. They will be modified a little bit because some things you can't do at home on, on your own and some things you can't do safely. Um, and, and the other thing is it will be graded. Before it was just like, let's do kind of the bare minimum to get through this spring semester. Now uh, it's gonna be rigorous, it's gonna be graded. Of course, some of those classes will look a little bit different. Um, and, and you can't do everything at home. You can't do necessarily a chemistry lab with fire and chemicals by yourself at home. But what we hope to do is be creative and try to make sure that we offer a great experience or as best we can in this environment for every class. And, and that will include, hopefully, uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but that will include having students come in in small groups because there are some things you just can't replicate at home. And we know that. And the best way is to have small groups of people in front of the teacher in a safe environment doing it. So we're going to do everything we can to figure out the best way to get small groups in here to, to um, deal with some of those classes that really need a kind of hands-on touch. Uh, in terms of the timeline, um, obviously, like I mentioned, you need to register. Uh, the great thing is we thankfully did pre-registration last spring before this all happened. So students got to forecast for their classes. So we have a set of five classes for most of you already already ready to go. What I need you to do is register this week, uh, like you normally do online, like I just talked about, through the parent portal. And then next week, we will push out a tentative schedule. It's a little bit different this year, right? You're not coming in to do your locker, and you're not coming in to get a student picture yet, all those kind of things. But it'll, it'll be the same in, in, in this sense. You'll register online, and then next week, we'll push out a tentative schedule for you, which shows you your five classes. That will happen next week. And then there's still that time for you to, to take a look and make sure it fits you. Maybe you've um, changed your mind and you're like, you know what, I really do want to take a drama class and I didn't sign up for it. So that would be the time next week where you could work with our counselors online or on the phone to get your schedule changed. Uh, obviously, we don't, we don't want um, just massive schedule changes because that's hard in this environment to make sure classes stay balanced. But we're willing to work with you if you need to make a, a change or two. But um, that will be pushed out with the schedules and make sure that you have everything you need um, sometime next week. So, you know, one of the, one of the in terms of meeting everybody's needs, this is one of the things we're really concerned about is, is uh, when, when students are here, we can check in with them regularly and make sure they're getting all the support they need. And so we're gonna need your help with that. In terms of special education services, students will still have those particular classes, the Encore classes, and work directly with their teachers and case managers. So I know they'll be able to get the support uh, that they normally do. And in fact, whether it's the teacher or the instructional assistant that normally helps, we're gonna make sure to reach out um, both in small groups later, but also virtually now to make sure those students have the support they need. And in terms of the counseling services, same. We'll do whatever we can to, to, to meet your need. If it's, if it's we have two, two great counselors, if it's video, if it's on the phone, if it's even a home visit, we'll do whatever it takes. If you're struggling for whatever reason, I mean, I know the world is upside down right now and it's it causes some depression, some anxiety, and a lot of challenges. But if you or your student really do need some support, please get a hold of us. We will figure out a way to, uh, and if we can't help you directly, we'll figure out a way to get the support to you. But, but we, what we definitely know, this is a challenging time uh, for, all, for all kinds of families 
and, and, and we want to be able to, to meet your needs. So if you need support from counseling services or things like that, please reach out to us. So, so I, there's a lot of information out there about the best way to get students back on campus. I mean, I don't think any of us disagree with the fact that having kids here is better. Uh, of course, we're not the ones that decide that completely. The state has set some boundaries and some guidelines. So I think the idea would be we would phase kids in as quickly as we can, but as safely as we can. So that would mean um, who could benefit the most right away. Um, for example, let's say we did we had school in the spring and students really struggled and they still have some incompletes and they haven't really found their footing even from last spring, maybe those students would come in. And then students that need special services in terms of special ed and ELL and TAG services, those would be kids who'd come in. We also talked about kind of the mental health services. So kids are struggling emotionally and, and, and they need some support from counselors, then maybe those kids can come in. And then I mentioned, at the high school especially, the CTE classes. We have a lot of electives that it's almost, uh, not almost impossible, but it's very difficult to be able to offer a realistic, robust class in construction or woodworking online. So, so we would try to bring kids into those classes as quickly as we possibly can. Of course, there are a lot of parameters to be able to do it safely, but we would look at what kids need it the soonest and also what classes um, uh, could, cannot be replicated at home and get those students in as soon as possible. And again, we're committed to eventually having everybody back here. Uh, and as soon as soon as we can, the better. But in the meantime, we're gonna have just to make the best of this tough situation and uh, start with those kids who, um, need, who, are, who are needs are the highest right now. So in terms of registration fees, obviously we usually have a few small ones. The core is about $25 usually. And a lot of that goes towards activities that they do for each class, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and graduation, those kind of things. Actually, we're going to postpone all fees. So you're not going to come to school owing anything at all. Uh, now, if we come back to school and we start offering some of these some of these things, or we start offering sports again, which we plan to in January, then there would be those typical sports fees and different things like that, and some class fees for classes like cooking, you know, small $10 fees. But for now, we're saying, you know what, there's enough crazy going on in the world, the last thing we need to do is have parents come up with some more money. So for right now, there will be no registration fees. The only thing we ask is that you actually do register and take care of that part, but it won't cost you anything up front. So supplies, uh, obviously at the high school, it, it's always been not a ton of, of supplies that students had to bring. It was on a big supply list, just you know, paper, pencils, things you can write with, that kind of stuff. So it's the same, you know, whatever you need to do, you're able to do your classwork. On the other hand, with assistance learning, there is some technology, obviously, that you're going to need. Uh, if you have a, a laptop or a computer at home, then that's great because you're going to need that every day. And if you don't, you need to have some kind of a webcam so you can see and they can see you. And so, um, if you can get that, there's even if you're if you have a laptop, there's probably a webcam built in. If you have an older desktop, it might not be, but it's easy to get a USB uh, webcam for relatively very inexpensive and if you need help figuring that out we'll help you with that too but you definitely need a laptop or a chromebook of some kind with a camera um, you don't necessarily need headphones although i would recommend getting them because you know if you're going to be sitting there all day and there's some distractions going on in your house it's nice that you can just plug in and hear easily what's going on back and forth but you don't necessarily need headphones i know most kids at the high school have headphones because they're sticking in, in class even when they shouldn't so that shouldn't be a problem but but mostly you need uh, some kind of a computer with a camera so you'll be able to interact those first hours in the morning. Uh, so so let's, let's see, answer a few other questions. Some people have questions about uh, getting ready to play sports. And that's and there's gonna be a video about that too with, with Mr. Ganfield, the athletic director. But just so you know, some of that's controlled by OSAA, which governs sports for the whole state of Oregon. And they're saying you still need to do some of these things. Because even though sports aren't start, starting till January, there's gonna be a kind of a season right now during the fall where, where sports can still do practices and work together. And so kids need to have a sports physical. If you haven't had one, you need to get one. They're good. You have to have one at least every two years. You have to get a sports physical. And also with that, there's some other, um, just some other steps to make sure that, that you're healthy and safe. One of those is in concussion testing. So the things that are required for sports will still need to happen. And um, that will, will give you some more details uh, when, with Mr. Ganfield when he has a chance to do that. But if you, if you do need a sports physical, we're not offering them here at the school like we normally do. So you need to get with your personal physician and make sure you take care of that. It's, it's a very simple process, but it is something that's required to participate in sports. 
Other students have asked about like the yearbooks, where those are, and so uh, some people call them annuals. But but let me let me see if I can help you with that. Um, we have the yearbook done uh, from last year. Actually, it's right here. So it just came in. But the, I, the the problem is it was late because all the printing was closed around the country, and so we just got them in. So what we're going to do is begin to have a way where people can come in and pick up the yearbook. Seniors, I think it's going to be in a couple of weeks. Seniors already graduated, and then everybody else will. We were going to have them at registration. Uh, obviously, we're not having in-person registration. So we'll set up a time when you can do a drive-by and make sure everybody gets their yearbook real soon. So you'll be hearing some more information about that. Yeah, so we're going to try to wait on that right now. Obviously, coming in and doing pictures, we do what we use. The local company is great. It's not, there's not a safe way to do that right now. But um, if we can transition back into school later in the year, then we're definitely going to figure out a way to do to do to do school pictures. But we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. I know that's a lot of information just to kind of throw you all at once. Uh, but again, we wanted to make sure you're as equipped as you possibly can. The main thing is. Uh, the reason we wanted you to do the comprehensive learning is because the best way for us to connect with you is to work with you each day, even if it's virtually, build a relationship with teachers, build a relationship with the community, build a relationship with families, and as soon as we can come back, we can start doing school that'll be better, that we know is great, that we're used to having here, and we can't wait forward. We really look forward to that happening with you, so thanks.